You know it's also contagious. Do you know that? Yeah, I, probably why I'm autistic. I probably can't you probably got it off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to welcome back to our channel and today we have a super exciting video for us. I'm so excited <laughs> for this video. We're going to be answering Google's most asked questions about autism. So most of you guys know, but for anyone who doesn't know, we're both autistic and we thought this would be such a good video to be on. Yeah, I'm so excited. So we want to make a lot more autistic content on here if you don't know we both have separate tiktoks where we both advocate and raise awareness on there so if you don't already follow them but we really wanted to bring it over to the youtube yeah. channel since it's such a huge part of our lives it is it's it's the biggest part ever so we're gonna introduce it with a bit more of a fun video so let's get into it right so we've got beth trusty macbook and we've moved over because <laughs> so you guys can see <laughs> Yeah, we've had many a saga where we filmed videos and forgot to move over. So this hits home. You're welcome. Should we start with why is autism? We could do. I feel it's like that might be a good point. Long. It's a good start and point. Let's go. I feel like we might be able to debunk some myths here. <laughs> so why is autism increasing? because people aren't getting ignored anymore yeah. autism isn't increasing diagnoses are increasing because a lot more people are becoming more educated exactly. and a lot less people are finally slipping under the radar yeah so it's not a case of oh it's increasing maybe diagnoses are increasing and awareness but it's not like spreading it's not like this disease yeah. it's like spreading like the cases are increasing it's not exactly like that and it will continue to increase because more people need them diagnoses. So many people go undiagnosed and sleep under the radar yeah. still. So, yeah, it's good. Why is autism a spectrum? Why isn't the right way? It's a spectrum, but people think it's different than it is. A lot of people think it's linear when it's more like a color wheel yeah, with so all different traits. What I guess a lot of people, especially in the past, but a lot of people still think it now is a case of, okay, Here's zero, here's a hundred, and you're somewhere on this. Yeah, it's like, but it's just not like neurotypical, that. so you're not autistic. And like the most autistic person you could think of, and yeah. everyone kind of fits there. And you're somewhere along it, and the less autistic you are, you're this way. And then, it, anyway, that's not how it is. And it will insert a picture of the color wheel. This is how it's now described by people who are um, educated, should we say. <laughs> Yeah, and this is why high and low function aren't things Scrap or it. mild, moderate, level one, two, three, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's not a thing and these labels yeah. are actually really able so don't use them because everyone is different. Yeah, and if it is confusing at all, kind of think about it like this. So you can't look at someone and say, okay, you're here or you're this level or whatever because it's different situations, different factors you may catch them on a on a day where they're coping better you may yeah catch like them on a work everyone day. is at different points and levels and the amounts of whatever you want to each say day. each day we're constantly changing so to give one person just like one label and like it just that's doesn't work you. because it doesn't apply to every situation if that was to be a like solid label so that's yeah. why it's society's way of kind of being like you don't deserve the support that is very minimal anyway but like you're high function so you don't need it yeah why is autism more common in boys? It's not. However, if you go back to this way, it's not called Asperger's anymore because that's scrap it, scrap it because yeah. of hands. It was based on boys. That's that's what the, the diagnosis of the criteria was from. And it was a huge misconception that only boys could be diagnosed with autism. It's not yeah. more common for boys to have autism, but it's a lot more common for boys to be diagnosed. Girls can mask a lot easier. Yeah. Boys present it a lot more. So... It's not more common, but some. It's, it's more commonly diagnosed. Yeah, and if you don't know too much about autism, masking is basically masking your autistic traits to come across as more neurotypical. So, yeah, it's a lot more common for girls than boys. Why is autism increasing in UK? We're going to skip that because that's kind of covering the top point that we just ignored. And the next <gasps> one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's my shit right so, there. Why is autism speaks harmful? Why isn't it? I think it's a it's a greater question. Yeah, it's a literal hate group. 
like yeah. it's ridiculous and the whole jigsaw piece situation they are the ones that kind of really popularize yeah 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 that, is that the it's word? almost like globalizing it i guess yeah and they also done the whole light up blue campaign which is blue blue boys. For boys boys are autistic girls cannot be autistic at all no apparently yeah and they also had the i am awesome campaign where <laughs> They shared that autism works faster than cancer, AIDS, and diabetes combined. Even though autism isn't a disease, it's not an illness, it's a neurotype. It, it, do you know it's also contagious? Do you know that? Yeah, I, probably why I am autistic. I probably you probably got it off me. <laughs> <laughs> also, Autism Speaks is very... How families are affected by autism. Yeah. They, the autism mom community, should we say, yeah. it's in favour of them and... My life is so hard because my child's autistic. They don't and... focus on helping the autistic child or teenager or adult or whatever. They focus on the families and then one of their um, another amazing advertisements and campaigns. They actually shared a story of a mother who wanted to drive her and her autistic child like, off a bridge. Literally off a bridge, like kill them both just because like, one of her other kids yeah. was autistic. So she decided she wanted to kill her autistic child and herself but she decided not to because she had a non-autistic child at home which these are just really harmful things that the autistic community don't need they don't support it literally it's so annoying because yeah okay if you have a child who is autistic you may find it hard and it may different different if you yeah. focus on the child chances are you'll be able to find out what triggers them what situations they're more likely to struggle in everything like that and if you help them guess what it may actually be less stressful for you so even if you are focused on the okay my life's so hard still help the kids yeah you want to help focus you on helping the child not just helping the child to become more neurotypical so it's easier for you and i also want to add that autism speaks do encourage aba the um I've recommended yeah, a hospital therapies. which uses electric shock therapy and has actually killed and tortured their patients. I think it's something like 84. They, they basically strive for a cure, which yeah. for a, 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 an organisation that's like in support of a condition that can't be cured because it's not a disease. <sighs> that, there's many reasons. <laughs> there's many reasons why they're harmful. Don't support them. Honestly, Going on from what you've just said, the next question leads on really well from that, which is why is autism a lifelong condition? It's a neurotype. Like, it's not just a case of like, you, like anxiety, for example, you can go undergo many treatments or whatever. And yes, okay, it can't always be cured. You can go through therapy, you can try medications and a lot of people can overcome it. Yeah, but that is It's like not the case. That's, yeah, that's like, that's, oh, do you know what? It's irritating. It's irritating to talk about it. That's an illness. It's something that can be cured. It's it's temporary. It can come in at any point. You can't just become autistic. Yeah, you're born, you're born autistic. That way, it's or you're not a brain type. You can't be. That's why the whole like oh everyone's a little autistic. Like oh I'm a little bit autistic. Whatever. It doesn't make sense. Like yeah. you're either born autistic or you're not. You're autistic in your or you're not. It's like it's it's literally the way the way your brain is. It's, yeah, it's a type of can't become it. Yeah, you, that's why all these therapies and whatnot and these cures. You can't cure a brain type. And if you're looking in to cure in a brain type and <laughs> looking into our DNA to make sure that we're no longer born, yeah. that is literally eugenics. You should yeah. not want autistic people to be able to just be normal people. And I'm not saying that from a place of, oh, like, it's easy to be autistic like yeah, it's hard it's however yeah. it's not being autistic which makes it hard it's, it's living the world in a built around world. it yeah it's like you're living in a way that is trying to confine your brain to i guess it also ties into the kind of like social expectations which again is obviously misunderstood by <laughs> autistics um so it's like why, why am i supposed to do this i can't do that like that it's not built for it's a different brain type that the world is structured for so it's not being autistic that's the problem yeah so all these scientists should be looking into how they can adjust the world and make it a lot easier for us versus trying to just like make autistic people extinct yeah. like like what it goes for many kind of conditions i guess it's it, the world isn't very versatile 
um, and this is just one example. Why does autism run in families? I think there's two points that I'll make from this and you'll probably be excited to go off. One, it's linked to genetics and two, typically if one person is aware of how autism can present or an autistic person can come across, typically the diagnostics between like family members to family members will be higher because they'll know what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as you said before, it is a brain type. So again, it's through, as well, say you <laughs> that the genetics? <laughs> so it's a brain type. It's through genetics, just like a blood type or things like that. Even though, like, that's a good, honestly, example, a blood type. Like, say, if your mum's, like, blood type, blah, blah. Like, it doesn't you... always mean you're going to come off with them. But sometimes it does. But, yeah, it, it's just how genetics works. <laughs> I'm even on a search, a different one. Go on. Maybe, what, about, like, what if we said what does autism or what? Or like are autistic and see what goes on from there. Yeah, could do. I feel like that one could be interesting. Let's type it first before we say it. The first one's so easy. Are autistic brains different? Yeah, like we said before, it's a neurotype, so it, it's a different brain type. Yeah. <laughs> Quite easy, simple. Are autistic toddlers clingy? It depends. I it feel really like depends. it can either go one of either way. Yeah. One, I feel like it really depends on the person, if that's like a safety person and they're in social situations or things that they don't necessarily feel as safe and comfortable yeah, in, yeah. they can't really be clingy to that person. But at the same time, one of the huge things when they're in like a safe space, like something that they look out for in like child development is if they're very like independent and what's the word? called withdrawn yeah i think as well for me when i was younger this is a the, it's kind of interesting because i think for me when i was younger i was literally both i was black and white with both so say if i was stressed or whatever my mom was my safe person because yeah. she, she she just was and so if i was stressed out whatever it'd be a social situation to hide behind her my mom can do all the talking until i was literally like 20 years old and she can deal with everything but then at the same time i think um People who are autistic tend to enjoy their own company quite often. Yeah. And um, so you can... I think it very away. much depends on the environment because I was kind of like yeah. that. I was kind of like withdrawn and whatever myself to myself when I was in an environment where I felt safe and yeah. comfortable in. Yeah. But then if I was like... Oh, so you can afford to that environment, Yeah. Almost. But even especially with, with other kids, um, withdrawn is an understatement for my behaviour when I was a, a, a child. <laughs> oh, the next one is going to air for both of us. It's really going to air for us. Autistic toddlers, naughty. First off, one, obviously, just like anyone else, autistic. Kids, kids can be people naughty. can be naughty. <laughs> That's just it. However, autistic children are naughty. They cannot control their emotions. And a lot of people will focus on the meltdown or the yeah. tantrum, which yeah, meltdowns are not yeah. tantrums. A tantrum can be conducted. Or meltdowns. bratty behaviour because the routines change. Yeah. Simple things like this. Um, but you need to focus on what's causing the meltdown. What is the root of that? It. Yeah, it's not them being naughty. It's them being so, so, it so like overwhelmed. It's asking for help like without knowing how to. Yeah, they re it's a communication barrier. Issue. Yeah, there's a huge <laughs> communication barrier with autistic people. It's one of the biggest struggles with autism yeah. is communication so that isn't them just not getting what they want and throwing a tantrum and even then even when say when, when they do get what they want and they're struggling obviously a part of being autistic is not being able to regulate your emotions yeah as let's just say a neurotypical brain and um, so say if they do find themselves in that situation they may be stressed at the fact they're acting a certain way but they just can't bring it back in but you know i know i've, I've seen a lot of kids be described as bratty or they just want their own way, or they're just selfish, they don't care about anyone else. That's them not being able to cope with a change or like a new person. Or it may be, oh, you bought them a different brand of food, the, the yeah. bratty, because it was less expensive than the one that you That eats. is something, Stuff when I was like younger, this. my parents would be like, oh, you're such a brat, this, why is that? Because I'd have my safe foods and they needed to be a certain brand. To so say if they would change it and it wouldn't be the same brand it would just be like, oh my God, you're a brat, like blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I physically couldn't handle a different brand because that's not my safe. That's not, I think it's as well, different. Um, when, when you're autistic, and I guess you have your safe foods, you can pick up on any little taste Change, of it. A yeah. little bit more salt, a little bit more flavouring, you can pick it up and you can pick it up a mile away. So it's not like it doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> yeah, and I also want to add that about what we speak about meltdowns for and autistic toddlers being naughty 
Autistic children don't need to have meltdowns. This is a huge thing. I've seen a lot of mums of autistic children be like, oh, my child doesn't have meltdowns. Does that mean they're not autistic? Like they're not having these tantrums that all of us no. autistic <laughs> children seem to be having. No, your child's just happy. They're just happy. Autistic people don't need to be having meltdowns all the time. Yeah. It, it just means that their life has been adapted to a way that is a bit easier for them. Or even if it's just co a complete coincidence, okay, that's benefiting them. That's helping them. They're okay. They're okay. They're, oh, oh. Are autistic adults controlling? I wouldn't say controlling. Need to be in control. Most of us, yeah. Uh, it's more so, it, it's more how the situation affects them. It's not like, oh, I want to control you. It's like, oh, yeah. I want to control what's happening to me. Or it's what's like around me. This, at this time, certain places, certain things around them. Like, say, for example, needing certain foods, needing certain things, certain times, certain textures, certain clothes, certain whatever. I think it's as well, the control and more so, I guess, it applies to other people. So it's yeah. also a change in routine. So say if, I know, especially when I was a teenager, one of the main things I struggle with, and I recall this when I was a kid too, if a mum would go out, say if it was like a Christmas night for work, or she would see one of her friends. But you'd need her there because she was like yeah, your was, main she, thing of safety. My safety, uh, with the older you get, the more I guess you can build your own safety things or whatever. But even then, we... Definitely. Each, each other's our safety thing. Yeah. Just, I think ugh, it's just, it's a tough one. It is a tough but one. But as a child, no. like you might have been seen as like controlling and bratty yeah. because yeah. it's like, oh my God, like you won't let your mum go. What I was, like I, what I, was seen as, I was seen as jealous. Yeah. It didn't come from a place of jealousy. I'm not jealous. I just, me I need the you there. And I, I just, no, I don't. Even though like my, my stepdad was very good at like what didn't, didn't need to happen. I think. Yeah. You just, you attach yourself more strongly to one person. And I think Definitely. my mum was the more sympathetic one, which I know everyone always has a more sympathetic parent. That's just, that's just <laughs> yeah. a given. And I was like, don't leave me. <laughs> Please don't be in <laughs> love with some. But yeah, no, so not controlling, but they like to be in control, I guess. Yeah. Just a weird one. I think we should maybe leave that there. And if you guys want a part two, let us know because we definitely love, love filming and stuff like that. Yeah, we love talking about awesome and all things to do with that. So yeah. definitely let us know if you want a part two. So I honestly had so much fun filming that video. I really want to, well, we, we both do. We've talked about this already, by the way. So <laughs> we both really want to do some more videos like this. Whether it's, obviously we've said before we want to do a lot more videos on autism. But even outside of that, just some more videos like this that we can get a bit more passionate bit more to say yeah so fun. if you do want a part two of this let us know and also if there is any other topics to do with autism let us know down below and we'll definitely definitely talk yeah. about it <laughs> God, yeah, we, we will also i think it's, it's, it's fun to mention holly ugh, is dyslexic i have adhd so we overlap in many ways so if you're struggling with more than one thing also Feel free to ask us and if you don't necessarily think it should be a video and you just want to talk to us make sure to check out our instagram and dm us and we'll reply back to you so yeah if you do want to follow us on there and tiktok they are both just beth and holly with an extra one at the end of holly and if you do want to be notified for the next time we post make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button below so thanks for watching i'll hopefully see you next time bye call it spring like everything is new the sun bursts flowers calling on one day